What's up guys, Chad, welcome back to the Easy Astro Images channel. You know, we're all constantly trying to make our Astro Images as good as we can, fighting through all of the obstacles that we have night after night. So it's great when we get like software updates for things that we might pay for like Pix and Sight. It's even better that we are getting a lot of awesome free software. And today what I want to talk about is Graxpert, or I'm just going to call it Gradient Expert because it just rolls off the tongue a little bit easier than in some other people's videos I've seen. So I'm a little late to the party on this one, but I just recently watched Warren Keller give a demonstration of things he was using. I think it's called the Power of X on the Astro Imaging channel. Go check that out. Last Sunday's episode. And he was using, um, highly recommended this program. And I honestly, you know, DBE per Adam Block and Sean Nielsen and everybody else has been working great for me for years. But when you hear one of the masters of Pixinsight say that you should probably give this a shot, then maybe you should just give it a shot. So basically what you do is just go to graxpert.com, download this. It's totally free. And literally all you do is just install it and then just go ahead and start up the program. So this would be like the very first thing you do. You don't even need to open PixInsight yet. Um, that's what's great about this. You literally just open up the Graxpert, oh gosh, I did it, Gradient Expert program and uh, you're good to go. So it's really simple and easy to use too. Uh, the developers, you know, tell you really not to do a whole lot with it i'm just going to kind of show you guys what i've been doing here so this is like an lbn of the smiling skull that i have been working on and i mean you know i've been fighting over this for probably a month now through different things like moon phases it's low in the sky at the night when i start and i've been splitting imaging time between it and the flying bat smoke from forest fires from Canada down here into Ohio. So we've just got a lot of obstacles going on, like I said, which really is just crazy. But this worked really good. And the only reason why I'm showing you is because I can actually show you like a real difference where he said to try it and this thing really does work better on this image and other ones actually that I've tested compared to dynamic background extraction. And I'll show you that. But the one key thing that he said is the code and everything for DBE is like either nine or 13 years old. It was like one of the first things that was like built into PixInsight. It hasn't been like evolved or developed like, you know, Blur Exterminator, things like that. So when you've got guys that are doing new stuff like this, then you're basically, you know, you're kind of riding on the cutting edge. So you're getting better stuff maybe in some cases and it's free so what you do is just easily just load an image which we already did and this is the image of the flying the smiling skull he's in there you've got uh, you can crop in here if you want to there's a little crop feature and stuff you know i really never bother with that much i don't use the auto crop or nothing really because it just kind of messes things up and then you've got uh, different stretching factors here. Now they recommend per the literature to like go ahead and set your stretch at like maximum, which is 30%. So that way you can see your gradient. And then, you know, you can also start playing with your saturation so you can see, you know, like maybe a saturation gradient that you have going up from side to side that you typically get with certain HO filters and stuff like that. So let's just go ahead and leave it here with a 30% stretch. Um, you can set your pixels per row to whatever you want to with the slider. The grid, uh, to grid tolerance default is at one. You just click on create grid and you can see with the tolerance settings that I have, it's not filling everything in all the way over here. Now you can either go in and like double click like on your mouse manually and it will just start to fill that stuff in or you can raise your grid tolerance i think like a 2.3 on here works pretty good for me and i click create grid let's go up a little bit more and it'll just fill in yep it'll fill in the rest of those dots now i already know from this image because this 
star has just gotten haloed and beaten up to death from all of the high clouds and the smoke and everything else that I need to move these out away or I'll get like a really weird stretching artifact ring there. So we'll do that. You can also zoom in and out with your mouse wheel, which is cool. And then once you get all that set up, you've got three different methods here to use. Uh, Warren and everybody else says pretty much just stick with the default, which is RBF. They've got all the literature for what all this means. If you care, most people don't. All they want to do is just click the button like me because we like to do easy things here. It's going to calculate that and it's going to go ahead and smooth everything out for us. So at this point, we can just get rid of the sample points. We can maybe bring the stretch back down to something that is a little bit more appealing to the eye. And then what we can do is, uh, you know, we can look at the background model that it took out. And if you want to, we can stretch that a little bit more so we can see that a little bit better. And this is kind of the background that it took out. So you probably aren't going to see this on YouTube, but there's a pretty big, great, you know, nice gradient that goes across. And then down in here, there is some like color fuzzing and stuff like that. And that's one important thing to remember about these kind of processes and dynamic background extraction is it's, you know, you're subtracting stuff away, but really what it's also doing is just kind of like equalizing contrasts and brightness levels and stuff of like pixels and nearby pixels and all that kind of stuff. So when it comes to like placing sample points over stars and over nebula and stuff, obviously if you can avoid that kind of stuff, it usually will yield you the best results, but a lot of times you just can't. So I've just kind of went this route. Um, I know in DBE with the, the, the Adam block way, you can actually normalize the entire image after you pull stars out. A lot of different ways to do this stuff, but this is just the simplest, easiest way really for me that I found right now. So that's our background and we'll go ahead and look at the processed image again. And then basically when you're done with that, you can see down here that if you want to go directly uh, and open this into PixInsight, you can save this as a 32 bit XISF file. Or if you want to take it into Photoshop, you can do 16 bit TIFFs, which by the way, I've also been playing with Photoshop too lately. So I've been trying to like stretch my horizons here and just kind of learn and play with a lot of stuff, playing a little bit with Serial and also this new Astro Sharp, which um, I've seen a few videos on and uh, some people like debating on how it actually works and all this stuff. So we'll leave that for another video. So we click on our saved process image and now let's go into PixInsight here and look at all of uh, the fun stuff. So let's see what images I have here. So this is the one that came out of Graxpert and this is the one with PixInsight uh, dynamic background extraction. Now, if we look at, you know, the actual image here that I brought into PixInsight, this is straight out of WBPP without going through the gradient expert. And I ran it through this dynamic background extraction process. Um, you can see the background here really is not capturing this down here as much it's a little bit there um and you can see the gradient of course this is all controlled based of off of some of these things that you can do like smoothing factors and all that stuff a lot of things that people just don't want to do and makes things a little bit more difficult so we're just going to get rid of those so what i'm trying to get to with this image is this so i've been playing around with this and you can see i've gotten pretty good results but that damn star and that halo is just killing me. So I'm probably going to end up having to crop, crop this part off here and just call it a day and move on to something else. But what I want to show you, because, you know, from all accounts, when you look at these, you know, you might be able to see the difference. The big, the big place to look at is going to be over here on the side. And if we go ahead and match the zoom views here between the two, I'm looking on my screen and it might be hard to see on YouTube, but the dynamic background extraction still has 
a little bit more of that leftover gradient over here than the gradient expert one does. And I guess the best way to demonstrate that is uh, if we just brought up something like curves or maybe even histogram transformation. So let's just bring up curves. And if we bring up curves and if I just start to curve this out a little bit, you can kind of see how that right side is accelerating in brightness and stuff a lot faster than the left side is. And then if I start to pump in more saturation into it, you can kind of see how there's kind of like more of a redder cast over here than there is on this side right here. And let's see if there's a better way to demonstrate that maybe with a uh, histogram transformation. And it's kind of subtle to see it, but it's definitely there. So if I start to stretch this a little bit, and then we bring in the black point, you can kind of see again there on the right side how it's coming up a lot faster than that left side is. And if we do the exact same thing to the gradient expert image, that's what we like to see. I thought that was looking a little bit funny. Okay, there we go. See how the brightness is, is all the way the same across the screen. Now, when I start to clip it, it's all, yeah, you can definitely see that now. It's clipped the same on both sides. Like it, there's no, there's no difference between one side of the image and other with the gradient expert one, but there definitely was with that one that I did right here with the dynamic background extraction. And you saw that, you know, I had actual places all over. Like, I don't know how many more spots you would want to put to cover that background. And you see how much more work it was compared to what we did over here by just clicking create grid. So pretty freaking simple and pretty powerful. So again, if one of the masters of Pix and Sight said this is what they use and it's free, then just go ahead and download it and give it yourself a try and see what you think. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video. We will talk to you guys in a few days. Peace.